Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Please uh, enjoy the wonderful breakfast. Uh, my name is Helge Zietzen. I'm the president of SID. I just wanted to welcome you this fine morning as you get ready for an exciting day. Um, before we get going, though, a bit, a bit of the excitement, I would like to thank Corning, who is sponsoring all the food here. Uh, and you should uh, you know, give a moment of thanks to the glass people, otherwise you wouldn't be eating. Uh, so <laughs> thank you. And hopefully that food puts you in a good mood, because you have one hell of a day ahead of you. You know, th those of you from the press and from other parts of the, the media, we uh, have uh, a record-breaking breaking display week to look forward to, um, record-breaking really at every single dimension, uh, uh, really, in SAD history. So not just better than last year, better than the year before, but better than anything that this 54-year-old uh, society has ever done. So uh, already last night, we surpassed 7,000 registrations. Uh, just to give you a sense of context, last year, final res registration at closing, end of the week, was 5,300. So we are uh, 1,700 up, uh, and the show hasn't even started yet. So um, I have a reasonable hope that we'll get uh, you know, 7,500, possibly even 8,000 uh, by uh, the end of the week. Uh, every other metric is up as well. Uh, the exhibit space is the largest ever in SID's history by a significant margin. Uh, depending how you count meeting rooms, we're somewhere between high 50,000 square foot to low 60,000 square foot compared to 47, I believe, last year, and that sort of was the stable line. So uh, tons of exhibitors here and tons of beeping. Um, we have, uh, you know, you can go all the metrics down. Uh, there's a record number of papers being submitted, over 700, 722, uh, when our historical averages were sort of five, 600, 650 or so. Um, so across the board, I won't belabor all this. There are sessions where we literally yesterday had to pull extra tables and chairs in because they're overcrowded. Uh, it's exciting time. It's good to be back in San Jose. That's obviously a major contributing factor. But it's also good to be in a vibrant industry. And maybe from your perspective, I'm sure you don't write articles about uh, you know, just numbers. But there's some exciting stuff happening. After, you know, after a few years of kind of you know, somewhat incremental process and progress in the display industry, we now have some really cool stuff. You know, we have foldable displays in production. We have you know, advanced OLED configurations. We have a whole bunch of cool things that are happening on the show floor, in the convention, in the paper sessions. Uh, for some of you who might have attended yesterday, uh, this uh, yesterday's award dinner, the, uh, apart from obviously giving deserved awards to all sorts of wonderful people that you can read in the documentation, um, you could see the, the sort of palatable excitement in the, uh, in the room, in part also because the um, Record numbers have also attracted some really high-profile people. So I encourage you, you know, those of you who are more snoopy or press people, uh, to seek them out. For example, yesterday we gave the um, uh, David Sarnoff Award, a new award we created for industrial achievement, to uh, the founder and chairman of BOE. Uh, this is the largest uh, display panel company on the planet by by every me measure and every market category. Um, and so, you know multi-billionaires like this don't normally walk the show floor. So I'll give a price to you, whoever hunts him down for an interview. Uh, similarly, we have uh, you know, CEOs, CTOs of Samsung, LG, some of the largest companies on the planet here, all walking the show floor for the first time, um, really, in a, in a long time, because you know, this sort of level of senior level attention is a novelty. So good hunting to all of you. Um, it's a great show. Glad to be here. I'm glad to have all of you here. Enjoy breakfast. I'll hand it over to Sri for the logistics of the day. But I just wanted to uh, encourage you to write wonderful stories about everything we're doing because we want to have 8,000 attendees next year and you're a key part of that strategy. That's really what we're feeding you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Okay. There you go. Um, I know we started a little bit later than we liked, but uh, this is, I think, a slightly better time than uh, even 7 a.m. So, um, as usual, my style is, uh, I, I know in breakfast uh, it's a little bit harder, but we're still going to try this. What I'd like to do is see if we can get everybody to stretch a little bit, and I uh, will get started so I can finish uh, well in time, so we can all go to our next meeting on time. Um, with your permission, uh, for those who are willing and able, uh, if you would kindly stand up and uh, step away just a little bit from your table. Thank you very much. Steve Atwood says, I hate this thing, <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway, because I've known Sri for so many years. Um, Jennifer and I actually did something like this in uh, Brazil a few years ago, didn't we, Jennifer? 
Yeah? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put some oxygen in your blood, okay? So uh, hopefully this is very good for you the rest of the day. You can put your hands up in the air, and we're going to go up and down. I'm only going to do 20. Usually I do 30 or 40. We're just going to do 20, okay? Let's do this. One, two, three. Come on, guys. You can do it. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Thank you. Please sit down. Trust me, this, this is better for you. It's good for your heart. Um, so this is our um, usual uh, press and analyst uh, breakfast meeting. I, I'm going to go through this very quickly so you get a glimpse of what's happening. Uh, for those of you that are uh, uh, new to uh, SID and Display Week, uh, here's a little glimpse on who we are. We are headquartered here in this area. We are volunteer-led. Uh, you just heard from Helga, he's our president. Um, he, like me and many others, are volunteers. There are probably about 400 of us that do various things for SID. And uh, we are probably the uh, only dedicated society for displays at our size. And we believe we provide a tremendous value to the industry by doing this conference and a whole host of other things. We have, uh, in this slide, we put together this slide a while ago. We have way over 5,000. I'm hoping this year we might even cross 6,000 members uh, that are uh, members of SID. 28 chapters worldwide. Uh, uh, the Japan, Beijing, and the Silicon Valley chapter are our biggest, and all three this year will exceed uh, 1,000 members, which has uh, not happened ever in the history uh, of SID. This chapter, uh, five years ago, the local chapter was maybe about 500 or so. We've literally doubled, uh, even though there's no display company per se in the local area, but uh, the end users and so on. And we have 12 student branches around the world. This is our 57th year, started at UCLA in 1962. So uh, tomorrow, we will distribute these awards Samsung won the award for the wall, uh, their uh, LED uh, wall, Apple Watch, uh, Sony Crystal LED, and then the display applications of the year uh, were JDI for the displays they put in the dashboard uh, in an automobile, and then Lenovo for the dual display, uh, LCD and e-paper. Uh, display components would be Dexerials for the AR film, and then Shot for their uh, uh, real view product. So those, are, uh, those will be distributed tomorrow. We put out a press release, there's details there. And uh, uh, if you need any additional information, uh, Anna in the back will be able to help you get that. So this is the part that I usually forget every year, so now I remember, let's do this. So my marketing team, uh, where's my marketing team? If you would kindly stand up, Neil, Lisa, Anna. Uh, put your hands up because there are other people standing so we know who you are. And then where's Lucy? Does he disappear? Ah, okay, okay. Very nice, very nice. So we have volunteers. Uh, thank you very much for everything that you guys do. Okay, um, today, uh, you know, we have an announcement uh, coming up uh, at the end of this presentation from Corning, and then they will also invite you to their booth. Uh, I won't go any more details because we're going to cover that in uh, quite a bit, a little uh, at the end of this presentation. Keynotes are from BOE, Google, and Samsung. That starts around 8.20 in the morning. Ribbon cutting at 10.30, after which uh, people get to go into the exhibit floor uh, to see the different exhibits. Uh, floor opens at 10.30 and goes until 6.30 today. Uh, we have a networking event, which is the first time that we're doing this, which is at 5.30 in the evening. Uh, I believe they're gonna serve beer for the first time at SID. I'm sure that was a challenge getting it approved <laughs> at SID. Uh, the uh, investors conference uh, starts at nine o'clock and this is produced by DSCC. That will also be very exciting. They're expecting um, a, a whole host of um, both venture capitalists as well as companies presenting that are looking for funding. Uh, there is a press luncheon right here in this room um, uh, and there'll be an announcement. I, I won't go into details about that now. Technical Symposium obviously runs through Friday, and this year the emphasis is on these foldable, bendable uh, type displays, and then AR, VR. Uh, iZone, uh, we've, uh, you know, we started this iZone uh, as a way to get 
uh, young companies to participate where they couldn't afford to have a booth, we would give them a free booth and we'll have a sponsor pay for that whole area. I remember I, I was uh, working uh, for E-Ink at that time and we were the first sponsor. This is probably six, seven years ago, something like that. And we barely, we had like 20 uh, tables and we would get like 24 companies apply. Right? This year, I can tell you, we probably stopped. We got like 75 applications. And, uh, and I believe about uh, 45 companies were chosen. And so these uh, uh, you know, will be very good uh, opportunity for you to take a look at uh, some interesting technologies. And the few companies that were in the iZone last year graduated and they have booths uh, on the show floor. And then there's an exhibitor forum, which uh, I was told by our convention um, chair, Aris, that it's getting much better every year and he would really encourage people to go and join that forum as well. On Wednesday, we have a press breakfast here about the same time, maybe a little bit earlier, 7.15 from ARM. And then um, we have a market conference on foldable displays by DSCC. And uh, DSCC's uh, 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 founder, Ross Young, told me yesterday that they've got record number of registrations for this conference. So that's going to be a very interesting, hot topic. Um, there's an automotive ma market conference that is uh, personally led by uh, Rashmi Rao, who is our general chair this year, and that's also going to be very exciting. Um, we did a job fair last year, and it was only for students this year. We opened up for other industry people. Uh, and uh, uh, that we've already got 15 or 16 companies that have officially signed up, there may be more, and then probably about 100 uh, students have also signed up to attend. Um, that's going to be very exciting. Uh, the iZone winner will be announced later on that morning, and then we'll have the uh, award ceremony uh, at lunchtime. The companies that I just mentioned will formally receive the awards. Uh, I will be moderating the CEO forum. This will be the second year in a row we are doing this. And um, Women in Technology follows the CEO forum. Uh, for me, this is a very big deal. Um, uh, you know, when I uh, agreed to volunteer for SID and serve uh, on the board and uh, be the uh, chair for marketing, uh, for me, the big criteria was um, uh, find a way to have more women in um, uh, every aspect of SID, particularly leadership, uh, bring more young people into the uh, organization. And we're making progress, and this is one of the ways by which we do this, I really, really, really appreciate, uh, uh, particularly those of you in the media, if you could come to both the CEO forum and the Women in Tech and uh, uh, write about this. We really want to make this a mainstay because um, the rest of our programs are much more aligned towards um, uh, you know, uh, people with a technical background, whereas this one offers something for um, probably everybody, including technical people. Uh, networking event, uh, again at 5.30 uh, on uh, uh, Wednesday, and then exhibit floors 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then on Thursday, it's obviously much shorter. It go, uh, the exhibit floors are up to 3 p.m. And then we'll have poster sessions from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., which uh, uh, you know, in the past years, they have been really wonderful, a lot of excellent posters um, uh, th that will give you uh, more idea into what's happening in the industry, okay? Uh, here's, uh, here are the three uh, women uh, leaders that will be part of the panel. Uh, Lee Epting, uh, Samantha Phoenix that some of you would know, she's from our industry, she works at Planar as a VP of Technology, and Consuelo Valverde, um, she, uh, both Consuelo and Lee are uh, new to our industry and they will bring a new perspective, and uh, Jenny Donlan that many of you know will be moderating that session. And the CEO forum, we'll have Dave Dutton from uh, Silvaco, uh, Rob McIntyre from LG, and then Andrew Scully, uh, CEO of Imagine, will be the three uh, CEOs. These are uh, all the different sponsors, and you can find their logos also on the different posters that we have all around the show. Hot topics for this week are automotive, AR, VR, TV, market, flexible OLEDs, reflective displays, digital signage, and the iZone, obviously. The reason we bring up iZone in this category is because there's so many different technologies, it's not even uh, easy to categorize some of them. Here are some highlights, and uh, obviously this is, uh, you know, of the 250 exhibitors plus probably 40, 50 companies in the iZone, um, we are not gonna cover all 300 here. These are only companies that did submit something to us um, that want to highlight uh, what they're doing. 
uh, Aris materials for uh, microfabrication film. Uh, they are in booth 319. I'm not going to go through all of this, but uh, clear ink. Uh, I will be showing uh, e-paper technology. Uh, there are two companies, C3 Nano and Cambrios, that will show silver nanowire based products. Uh, Jennifer here is a subject expert on that, uh, <laughs> on, uh, uh, on this uh, area. Um, Corning, uh, we're going to talk much more about Corning. Uh, they're going to be um, showing the Astra Glass uh, in their booth. Uh, e Ink will show a whole bunch of uh, e paper applications, including their uh, color displays. Uh, Fujitsu will show uh, uh, resistive touch panels. Uh, Arm will show some processors, obviously Arm will show processors. Uh, Iris Tech, uh, interesting company out of, um, uh, uh, out of uh, Montreal, will be showing uh, their technology that adapts to the, the uh, adapts a display to the viewer under different uh, circumstances. Okay, and then um, Introspect technology will be showing a uh, analyzer product, Konica Minolta spectral radiometer, Nanosys, obviously next generation quantum dots, that is their Area's expertise. Um, and Nanocomp, uh, I'm presuming they are from uh, Finland, and uh, they'll be showing a light guide for reflective LCD. And Radiant, who's been a long time supporter, will be showing uh, uh, a near infrared lens for uh, 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 facial recognition measurements. Uh, Sapflux uh, will be showing a uh, a quantum dot color conversion technology for micro LED and micro LED as you know is uh, also another very hot topic uh, this year multiple companies um, talking about and exhibiting it. Shenzhen China Star will show also a micro LED product. Um, a lot of these products these slides will not do justice you really have to go and see these products play with it and uh, even threaten to break it so that will uh, get the uh, booth staff a little bit excited. Uh, TNMA has got its SLT technology, and you can see their comparison of the images, very obvious what uh, their technology does. Visionox, once again, we actually gave an award to Visionox last year for some of their uh, products. Uh, this year they'll be showing a bi-directional foldable AMOLED um, uh, display. Synaptics will show the next generation VR displays via Optronics, uh, a dis interactive display system. And those are some of the highlights of what you can see. And here are some other logistics, uh, particularly um, from a press room perspective. We open 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. today and tomorrow, and then 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Thursday. Um, we are gonna be bringing uh, lunch, uh, breakfast, lunch, and uh, snacks into this room uh, for the media. And we really encourage you to use this rather than the ones uh, in the, in the uh, other conference rooms or session halls. Um, we have tried very hard this year, uh, we actually tried to do this last year as well to uh, see if we can bring more healthy food, right? And we would love to get your feedback to see if we have met that goal. Uh, wireless access available, there, uh, Display Week 2019 is the uh, network name, and then there's a virtual press office, uh, and uh, inquiries uh, um, go to press at sid.org, or you can uh, contact Lisa, Anna, Neil, uh, or somebody on, on my team. I believe, uh, okay, the, uh, on social media, we, we are focusing on display week rather than on SID. Those are uh, some ways by which you can connect. I really appreciate, I, I noticed yesterday there were a whole bunch of posts on LinkedIn where people are saying display week. We're very, very happy to see that uh, happening. And then um, next year, it will be June 7th through 12th in uh, San Francisco. As Helga mentioned, we tend to get a lot more people when we are here in the Bay Area uh, in spite of the fact that Bay Area is a little bit more expensive, and particularly for Asia visitors, our hotel rooms are also quite uh, pricey. And uh, some people had a taste of our uh, traffic as well <laughs> recently. Uh, okay, with that, um, I'm gonna uh, introduce uh, Corning. To me, uh, you know, I'm gonna go off, sc off script with Corning, and I actually threatened the Corning team that I will actually do this. Um, First, let me introduce the Corning speaker, and then I will tell you something that I learned about Corning recently, which uh, uh, was very fascinating to me, and I'll share that. Um, Han Yim uh, from Corning is here, and he's the business director for high performance displays at uh, Corning, and uh, he will further talk about Corning and uh, what they are uh, showing in their booth, as well as uh, uh, what their company is all about. But here's something that I learned from a friend of mine uh, oh, and she has a CEO club here 
locally and she sends these weekly updates uh, and as a coincidence she said uh, check out Corning and they're doing something uh, really great and this resonates with many of the things that uh, are my personal reasons for why I'm associated with SID and giving my time to SID. 40% of their employees are women. I don't think a whole lot of companies in this space can say that. Uh, being in marketing, I notice a lot of marketing agencies, majority are women, right? But, but that's rare. But in our industry, if you go to almost any uh, LCD maker or a OLED maker or any, you know, so-called highest technology within our industry, you don't see this. They've achieved something really magnificent. To me, that's a very big deal. 42% um, diversity in their management team. Right? That's pretty amazing. Uh, uh, you know, for those of you that have followed in Silicon Valley, as much as we tout as we are you know, the mecca for technology innovation and so on, we're not there. 100% pay equity for men and women as well as minorities, and they achieved this in 2017. To me, these three statistics uh, are the reason why young people should go work for that company. With that, uh, Han, welcome, and thank you. Can you hear me? No, it's working. Okay. All right. Thanks, Siri, for the introduction, and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Corning, I'd like to spend a couple of minutes uh, introducing the company. So our company is one of the world's leading uh, high-tech material science company. Uh, we uh, have uh, world-class expertise in glass science, uh, ceramic, and optical physics. And with that, uh, we introduced many innovative products that uh, transform the industry and change people's lives. Uh, our headquarters is located in upstate New York, a small city called Corny. But however, our footprint is very global. Uh, our R&D center, our lab, our sales office, and our manufacturing starts are truly scattered across, acro across the globe. Our last year uh, revenue is a little bit, little bit over $11 billion, and we are ranked at uh, 293 of uh, Fortune 500. So uh, one of our earliest innovation, and I believe it was 1879, is the glass envelope for Edison's light bulb, right? And that kind of transformed, evolved into uh, uh, CRT2, Right, and then that also later transformed into uh, the first glass substrate for the LCD industry. And along this path, uh, we have been on the cutting edge of the industry evolution for more than 80 years. Um, and speaking of the glass substrate, uh, actually 12 years ago, or 13 years ago to be exact, at SID, uh, we introduced uh, Legal XG brand. Uh, this glass, uh, since the introduction, has been the industry staple. Uh, enabling a lot of transformation in the display industry. For example, from at that time, a small uh, laptop size uh, panel all the way up to a TV size. And also for TV specifically, from uh, standard resolution to high resolution 4K and beyond. Now, as you know that uh, consumers demand for more lifelike uh, viewing experience continue to increase, right? And this also always creates a uh, challenge to our customer panel makers. Uh, they need to figure out how to serve and capture this opportunity, but at the same time in a cost-effective way. And then one of the solutions uh, a lot of our customers are adapting is called a new uh, backplane technology called IZZO or uh, Oxide. Um, and as uh, our customers uh, adopt new technology, that naturally creates uh, new challenges and requirement for the upstream players like us. And us, uh, just like any other high-tech companies, we love technical challenge. We love to tackle tough questions. And as part of that, uh, <coughs> as a part of that, uh, uh, we're looking, we actually spend a lot of time looking into uh, 
what opportunity we can get out of this, and uh, that led to uh, a development of a new glass. And that is the reason why we're really here today. Uh, we'd like to introduce, introduce you to our new glass product, uh, Corning Asteroid Glass. Uh, Corning Asteroid Glass is optimized for various high performance applications, specifically uh, using uh, oxide TFT backplane technologies. Um, the, the development of this glass uh, actually required a lot of deep uh, understanding of our customers' technology, processes, and challenges. And based on their challenges, and based on their understanding, uh, we were able to identify four key attributes that customers really value. Uh, one is low uh, total pitch variation, another one is low to total thickness variation, uh, lower sag, and specifically for mobile devices, uh, optimize and balance the etching performance. And what is really special about this glass is, and for those who work in the analog kind of world, you know, you try to move something here, then definitely compromise the other, other, other area. And uh, what we really try to do is create an optimal balance of these four attributes to maximize the value to our customers. And that's what's really special about this Astro Glass. Okay. So we truly have a high confidence that the Astro Glass will be a very key component of the current and coming high performance applications going forward. So uh, with the launch of Astro Glass today, uh, Astro Glass will join our uh, glass portfolio along with our industry favorite EXG Slim and truly premium high, perform high, perf high performance uh, Lotus NXT glass. Uh, we ask you to join as we join us as we work with our customers to define the new chapter of the display industry uh, together. And again, uh, I'm very excited to share this news with you today. Um, so uh, immediately after uh, the breakfast session and uh, throughout the duration of, of our uh, show. Uh, uh, in our booth, we have an Astra Glass team ready to uh, help you answer any questions you might have and also share the story around the development of the glass and the science behind the glass. Uh, again, I think uh, Sri uh, kind of introduced our, our uh, booth number is 1119. And uh, if you especially, especially if you're interested in the one-on-one -on -one interview, uh, please contact uh, Brittany here. Right. Uh, she will uh, help us arrange the time for that. Okay. Thank you very much.